My question is simply why? Why did they think that this would be a good idea? I can't tell if I'm being a hater or if I just have grown out of these movies because like, yes, I understand they're made for children. I'm aware. But I mean, you know, still, even at my age, I feel like I can sit down and enjoy a good Disney Channel original movie. I mean, that's a similar genre, but this, I, I don't know. I personally can't really get behind it, but let me know what you think. It would even be fine if the movie was like bad, but entertaining. But this movie, I feel like three fourths of it was just really boring. So the movie starts out with Claudine just skating around. I mean the fact that she can skate is like not relevant to the movie whatsoever so feel free to forget about that but she does end up revealing her werewolf self to the other humans around her and we get a first glimpse of that tasty CGI. Listen I don't really care if the CGI is not the best and it wasn't even that bad with certain exceptions. So since she's exposed herself to the humans she ends up running off into the woods and I thought she was gonna live in like a cave or something but no it's your good old suburban middle class home on a cul-de-sac. So Claudine pretty obviously looks like a wolf. So you may be wondering how it's possible for her and like her entire wolf family to exist in the human world. Well, that's actually not even a problem because her entire family consists of just her and her human father. It's hinted that her werewolf mother like passed away or is otherwise not in the picture, but you know what that means? Claude erasure, Pauline erasure, all of Claudine's brothers and sisters gone. And that's upsetting to me just because I feel like Claudine being an older sister is a big part of her character. But you know, I pretty quickly found out that the Claudine that I know and the Claudine in this live action movie are two totally different people. But you know what, for the sake of this movie, I will actually give it a pass just because Claudine's dad is so cute. Surprise! <laughs> so then they get to explaining the main like plot, the main problem of the movie, which is the fact that Claudine is half human, half werewolf. You know, her mom is this werewolf and she went to Monster High and she's this really important alumni. Her dad is obviously human. And you know, this sort of interracial marriage or whatever is practically unheard of. And you may be thinking, Amanda, what about like Holt slash Jackson Hyde? Hang on to that thought. And then you may be thinking like, Amanda, aren't werewolves half human already? Like if you think about it, what makes a werewolf a werewolf is the fact that it's part human, otherwise it would just be a wolf. So if a werewolf and a human were to reproduce, wouldn't that make the baby like three-fourths human and one-fourth wolf? These certainly are the questions. So anyway, Claudine drops this bomb on her dad that she was accepted into Monster High. And he's like, wait, no, honey, you can't go there because you're not 100% a monster. They don't like not 100% monsters over there. And she says, well, I got accepted. And he was like, okay. So that conflict just resolved itself, I guess. So just like that, she's enrolled into Monster High, despite being like a half-blood situation. The dad conveniently knows the way to Monster High because Claudine's mom showed him one time, apparently. To me, what makes this movie really hard to watch is the dialogue. I mean, it's like the typical cheesy Nickelodeon Disney Channel dialogue. And all your clothes? My clothes? I forgot all my clothes. Really? <laughs> no, dad. And I get it, again, kids movie. But does that mean the dialogue has to be awful? No. Another staple of children's movies are random musical numbers. And you know what? The songs in this movie actually slap. Nervous. Now, here's the part of the movie where we get introduced to all the Monster High characters we know and love, or so I thought. We already met Claudine, she's completely different from like the Monster High Claudine. She kind of acts more like Frankie to be honest, but I don't know if that's just like her becoming more boring because she's the main character. Then we get introduced to Draculaura, and looks wise, she's slaying, she's so pretty. However, listen to this. No Draculaura, your performance here must be exemplary. I got it dad, no pressure. So number one, she doesn't have the iconic accent, which you know, not really a big deal, but personality wise, She's so different. Like, she's the complete opposite of, like, the Dracula from the Monster High series. You get to see this little interaction between her and Dracula and see him putting pressure on her to be, like, the best of the class. I mean, needing to be the top of the class and academic pressure, that is not stuff we've seen with the Dracula, I know. But you know what? Whatever you need to do for some character development. Here I Abby what? What? Okay, I know I haven't heard this girl speak or anything, but Abby would never. Then Frankie is introduced and personality wise, she's like Frankie from the Monster High series on steroids mixed with Entrapta from She-Ra. I see the monster. Leo, Laguna. Welcome back, bestie. Laguna? I'm so L Laguna? Why did Laguna steal Draculaura's accent? And why isn't she blue? Did she run out of face paint? Cleo kind of looks like she's slaying though. I just saw dudes. <laughs> I mean, I don't see any snakes, but I guess they don't have the budget to CGI them every time he's on screen. And what happened to his shades, bro? I mean, the whole vibe is just so wrong. He looks like a theater kid. He looks like he's about 0.5 seconds away from whipping on his guitar and serenading me with his rendition of Hallelujah. We broke up over the summer. What? I'm sorry. Damn. This whole reboot thing is really trying to say Cleo, deuce, 
never happens. I mean, this live action version isn't really embodying the ship that I know and love because these two personalities are just not Cleo induced. So I'm not too mad that they're not together in this rendition, but why, why? Honestly, after this whole introduction thing, the only people that I like are Frankie and Dracula because I feel like they're giving everything that needs to be given to this role. Everyone else is playing a character that I simply do not know. What up, man? Hey, I got a feeling this is gonna be hot. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I've got my eye on you this year, Deuce. Won't be any trouble for me this year, headmistress. He looks like he's about to give me a monologue about how much of a weirdo he is. We're making a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see how you feel after a few hundred years of classes, Mr. Comos. Is it bad that I ship them? Anyway, so that was the introduction. Really wild, really crazy. I just, I mean, here's the thing. I don't really hate any of the actors for the way that they're portraying these characters because they didn't really have a choice in the matter. I mean, they're given a character description. They're just doing, they're playing their part. And their parts are not the characters that we know know and love from the Monster High series, and that's not their fault. I think actually they're kind of slaying the parts that they were given. Anyway, we're introduced to all these characters and Claudine now has to go find her dorm room. And along the way she runs into... Excuse me! Gulia girl, is that you? <laughs> right. Uh -huh, right. So naturally, Claudine, Frankie, and Draculaura are roommates. And you know, here we really get a glimpse of like Frankie and Draculaura's personalities. Stone takes us the wrong way. I'm just a private person. <laughs> This side of the room is mine. That side is yours. Got it? You know the type of monster who loves to be surrounded with others so they feel a real sense of connection and community? Yes, that's why I'm here. Yeah, I'm not. Doesn't like community? Girl, what do you mean? What do you mean? Draculaura is the epitome of community. <laughs> I mean, I get that they're like two, they're two completely different characters. But I mean, I mean. I mean, I just, I'm sad, can I, I can't help it. You know, then throughout the movie, we have some really riveting interactions between the characters. Hey, broski, what's hey, going man. on? Broski, broski, broski. I have a long list of other interested creatures just waiting to date me. It's good to see that you've moved on, Cleo, and that you're still the same impressively self-involved monster I broke up with. Ew, ew, I, I hate this. Yeah. Totally wants you back. What they did to Laguna, absolutely unforgivable. Not only is she not blue, no Australian accent, but they make her stupid. There is a very attractive monster staring at you. Hey, standing up to Cleo like that? Courageous move. No, 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 no. I can't do it anymore. I can't. And every reboot, Deuce is shipped someone else. Someone else. Not Cleo. And he's not even the same per- Why? Why? My question to you, Mattel, or whoever's running this, is why don't we like the Cleo-Deuce power couple? I don't get it. Why do we need to have Deuce with Frankie or with Claudine? Why are we afraid to spice things up? Deuce is not the only love interest in this show. There are so many characters who can mix and match. We don't need to be doing this again. Nuh-uh. No. I'm tired. Tired. I'm tired of this. And like what they did to Deuce in this movie, he's just so, you know, he's kind of like Ben from Descendants. Honestly, I think that's what Nickelodeon is trying to do. Nickelodeon is trying to pull a Descendants on us. But is it working? Personally, I'd say no. I'm trying not to be who, who I was anymore, if that makes any sense. Yeah, buddy, it's kind of hard to lose me when you say one goddamn sentence. So anyway, it's worth mentioning that even though Claudine got accepted into Monster High, she still has to hide the fact that she's half human, especially from the principal. And you may be thinking, well, how did she get accepted in the first place? Well, apparently she just omitted the fact that she has a human dad. But you know, you may be thinking, Amanda, that doesn't really seem to be a bit of a problem. How is anyone supposed to find out she's human? She looks like a werewolf all the time. She could just say like her dad passed away or like, I don't know, something happened. Well, maybe not passed away from mom passed away and then she'd be an orphan but maybe her dad is just a werewolf that doesn't like to come to school okay it's very easy to cover up if you're not gonna background check your students before accepting them she's already accepted into monster high the maintenance of her werewolf status should be the easy part well here's the thing besides the fact that she brought a whole ass picture of her human dad and openly facetimes him on the dorm room stairs she turns into a human whenever she gets nervous as a sort of fight or flight response because that makes sense after claudine is asked to be the student ambassador by the principal to this important event with her zero qualifications, she ends up saying that she will bring her dad to said event, which causes her to be in a bit of a pickle. That is until she learns about Holt slash Jackson Hyde. They finally brought him up for Mr. Narnia himself. The teacher then sings his silly little song, which I wasn't really vibing with until he hit the... <laughs> 
topic, but I kind of do ship Draculaura and Mr. Beast Boy over there. So because of the teacher, we learned that Holt slash Jackson Hyde figured out a way to turn Foley into a monster and wrote down his discoveries in his journals located in the science archives. Also, his lab is on campus with the potion to become a full-on monster is just sitting there for Miss Claudine. How convenient. So Claudine goes to the science archives but ends up getting scared by Frankie, who was in there for some reason. And so Claudine ends up revealing her human form to them. Then Frankie translates the journals which were written in code and finds the coordinates to Hyde's lab which is located in the graveyard which is off limits to students. Except for Gulia who sleeps there and for Draculaura who's practicing witchcraft. Yup, uh huh, that was a plot twist because Dracula hates witchcraft. Like it's, it, it wasn't important enough to mention at the time, but at least it resulted in another boss. So Claudine ends up telling Draculaura that she's part human as well, and Draculaura helps them by trying to make a potion to try and break into Hyde's lab that they ended up finding, but it was locked. The thing is though, is that they need a bunch of ingredients to make said potion, which then initiates the most boring rendition of a treasure hunt plot that I've ever seen in my entire life. It's funny because one of the ingredients that they needed is snake venom, so naturally Claudine goes to Deuce because they're love interests or whatever, but randomly during this whole encounter, she tells him to run for student council. The last few years, I was was headed down a dark path, so I changed things up. It's like I know what I don't want to be. No, I just gotta figure out who I am. A guy like you, he can be anything. Heck, you could run for student council. And at the very end of the movie, he does. I'ma just be me. Hey. I'm running for student council. Like, I guess it was for character development or whatever, but it was just so random. Anyway, after a catchy little song. Bye. She gets the venom, they assemble all the ingredients together, and surprise, surprise, it doesn't work because this potion was like really advanced for Draculaura. When they all get back from the graveyard, turns out Cleo snitched on them, but that's overshadowed by the fact that the physical school itself is having a full on angst rage and is falling apart because there's a monster without a true heart in their midst. Claudine takes that personally and runs away very briefly before Draculaura and Frankie pull her back to Monster High and they figure out that Claudine can unlock Hyde's lab by using her human hand. They find the lab, but surprise, that teacher that we all new and love is evil. He drinks the potion Claudine was maybe gonna drink and turns into this full-on monster dude. It turns out he's actually Hyde's son and wants to destroy both Monster High and the humans that killed his father because that happened. And you know what? During this whole thing, I was a little bit confused about Mr. Comos's villain origin story. So he wants to avenge his father, right? Fair enough. But he also seemed to refer to himself as a half-human. You're just like me. An innocent victim with no place in the world. But like if his mom was a monster and his dad was a half monster, then how human is he? Is he only a little human? But then he said like he didn't have his human qualities, like it wasn't passed down. Dad didn't pass down his alter ego, so without a true human hand, I was never gonna open it. I don't know, I, I don't know. So all this shit goes down at the very end of the movie. And it was actually the most interesting part, but you know, here's the thing, all of the things leading up to this was just so boring. Like here, Comos went batshit crazy and I could tell the actor was like really getting into it. Oh man, I feel good. Look at this rockin' bar. Quick run! He was really having his moment, which, you know, major slay. Apparently drinking the potion gave him the ability to steal other monsters' powers for some reason. Claudine's been such a conscientious student. Homegirl has done zero assignments over the course of this movie. She never followed through with any obligation that she had to the school, to the principal, just saying. You know who probably did though? Cleo. Cleo? She was such a weird character in this movie. Can I talk about this for a second? Cleo was sort of like the mean girl, but she also didn't do anything mean, but also, I mean, she was like a little bit rude, but that was pretty much it. And then she was also just done so absolutely dirty time and time again. Here's a little compilation for you. Who can tell me? when Monster High was built. Uh, yes, you. The school was built in 1071. And who can tell me why Monster High was built? Uh, Frankie again. I don't have any followers. Wait, I just got one. Oh, yeah, that'd be me. Now we can be beasties online. Fun. Night night ghouls. Mr. Comos, can I just say how excited I am to be in your class? Oh, that's great, Cleo, thanks. Uh, you wanna do your report on Hyde? I think that's really cool. I also have some questions about the report. I've just got to help Claudine here for a sec. And Cleo. Yes. Be nicer. Don't listen to Cleo. She's got mummy issues. So all I'm saying is this version of Cleo deserves some justice. You know what? I'm fully team Cleo. Cleo is slaying the egg. She is the moment. And of course, she's the one that ends up saving everybody, actually. Frankie, Draculaura, and Claudine end up calling Cleo for help. And Cleo ends up bringing all the main characters. Unfortunately, Comos then steals Deuce's power and uses it on him. 
least I finally got to stare into your eyes. Claudine ends up turning into a human because of this whole mess and then reveals herself to the whole school and the principal because she shows up eventually and then uses the reflection in the phone to turn Comos into stone. Turns out he was actually the impure heart that was making the school fall apart. Plot twist yet again. And just like that, the eternal feud between monsters and humans is resolved because it was just a silly little misunderstanding. So silly. Anyway, that's about it. They go out with a banger. No apologies. She's the one. The key to destroying the vampires once and for all. You're kidding. There's gonna be more of this shit? Whose fault is that? I mean, mine, I guess, because here I am sitting here watching the movie, talking about it. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, my, my bad. All in all, I'd say this movie was a glorified music video. I'm sorry if that's harsh, but like I said, I think all of the actors did a great job with what they've got. I think the music numbers slayed the day. But here's the damn thing, though. I didn't like what they did with the characters. I didn't like what they did with the plot. The only things that made this show worth watching were Frankie. I thought they were super cute. I really liked the fact that they were really awkward and energetic and eager to express their knowledge for the world. That all slayed. I thought that that was pretty much the only character change that worked. Dracula, he really put his all into the accent, was loving that. Mr. Comos really put his whole comb ussy into that villain role. Also, Claudine's dad was precious. I just, I really don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like out of 10, I would rate it at a solid six. Anyway, let me know what y'all thought. I hope you had a good time watching this and I'll see you next time.